Thank you very much. Today I'd like to talk to you about Goodwill. What is it? How can you use it? And uh, why you should even care about it in your business and in your life. Uh, let's talk about the definition of Goodwill. What is it exactly? Well, dictionary definitions, we're talking about an attitude of kindness, positive reputation, what people think about you. Um, also in the corporate world, if you look at from an accounting point of view, it's just the value above the asset value. As in, if a company sells for a million dollars and they have $500,000 in assets, anything above that is considered the goodwill. It's that kind of intangible that the company is buying, the purchasing company. It also could be called the relationship capital. You have a certain amount of goodwill with the people you know, your friends, your family. You could also call it a type of social currency. And it's more than just a mysterious mojo. It's actually a real thing you can measure in business. You could say it's also the glue that holds a relationship or an office or a team together. Like here's an example. This is uh, Charlie, and he is the guy that, or the horse that holds the, uh, the office together, as you can see there. Let's talk about measuring it. How do you measure, really measure it? Well, if you were to die today, how many people would come to your funeral? 50, 100, 1,000? Let's take a, a slightly, take a look at a slightly less morbid example. And if you go out of a room and then someone says something negative about you, do the people around you hear that? Do they defend you or do they add fuel to the fire and throw you into the bus? Okay. It's something that you accumulate every day or it's something that you're burning away. It's like a savings account, a goodwill savings account. It's also something that you have for a rainy day. When a customer goes to make a complaint, or if you go to make a complaint about a company, how you go about that depends on the goodwill that's been built up, which is from how you've been treated, what you've gotten from the company, how you like that company. In a business, there's certain levels of service that are being given. Let's say there's three levels. The first level, could be giving less than what's expected. The second level would be giving exactly what's expected. And the third level would be giving more than it's expected. And only one of those is going to give you goodwill. It's only going to accumulate goodwill. The thing about goodwill is that it's expensive. You know, doing extra things, going an extra mile isn't cheap. It takes effort. It's also very fragile. You can do one thing, make one mistake, in your company or with a certain customer and damage all that goodwill. Let's take a company that's known for the goodwill that they have, Zappos. Let's take a look at all their good points. They promise that shoes will be there in three or four days. Zappos is the number one selling shoe company online. They sell a lot of shoes. I believe it's over a billion dollars in shoes. And they promise it in three or four days and many of their customers are upgraded to overnight shipping. They've also set up their whole shipping facility in, I believe, Kentucky, right where UPS is, so that they can get the shoes out even faster. They have free shipping both ways, a one-year return policy, and they're consistently rated the top company to work for. People love that company. And they have tons of loyal fans. They actually offer free tours of their facilities, and you look online, it's a lot, a lot of positive things out there. And 75%, three out of four of their customers actually are prior customers or they were referred by someone else. Imagine that if three-fourths of your customers came back over and over and over again or they referred someone else. It's pretty amazing. And over a billion dollars in sales. You can call them anytime, day or night. They've actually tested this. You can call them and ask them random questions. You can call and ask for the best pizza joint in whatever city you're at and they will answer any of those questions for you. Now let's look at the bad. Now what is the consequence? What is the framework? How can a company do this? Like why doesn't every company in the world do this? Sounds like a great idea, right? Well, the company continually lost money for seven years. It's a long time to not make a real profit. They have very thin profit margins and also the founder, the current CEO of the company, he was already a dot-com millionaire. He put his own personal wealth in the company to keep it alive. They pay employees at or below market wages. And they have a 35% return rate on their products. 
Because remember, it's free shipping both ways. You take the shoes, you try them on. If you don't like them, you send it back. They encourage that. Okay, so that billion dollars in sales, it's all relative. So a company like Zappos, they're taking a the short-term and a long-term point of view. Now, short-term, they're losing money, losing money, losing money. But just recently, they were bought out from Amazon for 800 or 900 million dollars. Okay, and they didn't buy it for the abundance of profit margin. They bought it for market share and the goodwill that they had been accumulating. They were trading profits for goodwill, and they later turned that into a sale and then their huge market position. Zappos would be very, very, very hard to compete with with all the goodwill they've accumulated. It's a real thing. They actually bought it, so to speak. And in the online world, where I do a lot of business, is that sometimes we forget about this. You know, using a website, you never see the customer. Sometimes you forget that's a big part of it, is the goodwill. You know, things that you're doing, are they helping or hurting goodwill? Because there are a ton of things that I would call goodwill busters that can diminish what you have. Look at hard sell. You know, from a sales point of view, a lot of places will teach you how to sell, how to sell aggressively, increase sales by being more aggressive. Now, hard sell is great, but if you do not deliver more than what's expected and have a very happy customer, you're going to have a problem. On the online world, pop-ups. You got a lot of pop-ups on lots of sites, different forms of pop-ups. They're annoying. They probably work, which is why you keep seeing them. But you get annoyed by them. You know, aggressive marketing in general and pie-in-the-sky promises. A lot of marketing systems or sales trainers, they may teach you to make the biggest promise possible in your sales and what you're doing. But if you have a customer who's dissatisfied and it was made to purchase or they purchased because of some big promise and they didn't get what's expected or didn't get more than what's expected, you've just damaged your goodwill and they're going to look at you with more suspicion next time. And certain industries are plagued with this problem, such as you know, the car industry. Some companies out there are used to doing business and they're profitable because of some of the things that they do that are goodwill busters. You have the fine print. Okay? You know, lots of contracts out there, 20 pages of contracts, you have to watch out. The company is being profitable because of what they're writing in the contract, but they're pissing people off over the long term from what they do. Or how about the $40 pack of gum? I've bought $40 packs of gum before, and they taste the same as $1 packs of gum. <clears throat> and I'll, I'll show you how you buy a $40 pack of gum. You go to the store, you use your debit card to buy some gum, and uh, it's 2010 these days, and people don't give you a dirty look for buying something for a dollar with a debit card anymore. So you buy it, and then for some strange reason, you don't know why, but you've overdraft your account. The bank's charged you $39 for that $1 pack of gum, and you got a $40 pack of gum. Okay? Now, look at what the bank is doing. Now, they don't have to do that. Right? I mean, it's funny that there's a charge for not having money. There's actually a fee. That doesn't make sense. Like, why are you charging me this? You know I don't have any money. Why are you charging me more? Okay? But they do it because it's extremely profitable. You're at a severe disadvantage. It's in their big long terms and conditions. And they got you. And a huge percentage of their profits are from that. But how do you feel about that when you get a $39 overdraft fee? Do you like that bank? Does it seem fair? What do you think the next time you go into that bank? Okay. This is here to remind me of the story of I, I first got the idea of how this whole goodwill situation works is I was in Jamaica on a cruise and you know, I was going to buy uh, a souvenir for someone and I saw it in a, one of these markets and I said, okay, it's Jamaica, it's supposed to be negotiable, let's negotiate, let's see how good of a negotiator I am. So I go and the lady tells me $60 and I, of course, I start at like 15 bucks and I start at 15 and we keep working, working, she's at 50, 40, 30 and I'm like 16, 17, being pretty ridiculous about it because I don't know how much it's, it's worth. And then after, let's say, 10 minutes of this negotiation, I say, you know, here's 20 bucks. And I pull it out of my pocket, and I say, take it or leave it. She grabs the $20 out of my hand, throws me the item, calls me a cheap bastard, and, and tells me to get out of the store. <laughs> now, that didn't work out the way I thought it would. Um, you know, I thought, you know, you negotiate, and you, you work it out, but... I realized that I traded money for goodwill. 
I traded what she thought of me or how she thought of me as a person and her willingness to have me in her store for the five or ten bucks difference that she would have been much happier to accept. Okay? If I was lost in Jamaica and that lady saw me on the side of the road with a map kind of going like this, you know, do you think she would help me? Okay? I actually, that's what I bought. That's what I paid for. That's what I exchanged is I traded that. That's what $5 or $10 difference got me. Okay? And I thought, you know, it's a story that I'm not that proud of. It, it seems kind of stupid, but it made me think. I'm like, wow, like, what, where's the goodwill? Like, why? I thought I did everything right. You know, I would negotiate and I was tough and I, I went for it and it didn't work out. So that made me kind of start to research and see. Here's another example. Uh, American Airlines in the 80s, there was a CEO who was very well known for his cost cutting and kind of turning American Airlines around. And one of the things that he did was he figured out that in the salads that they would give you on board, now you're going to have to turn back the clocks and remember that when they actually gave you food on the airlines, okay? And they didn't make you pay for it and, and all this stuff. But in the salads, he figured out that if he removed the olives from the salads, that he, his company would save something like half a million dollars a year from just olives. And the reason for that is because they had like a tiered system, like two to four items were this much and five to six items were this much from the people they got their salads from. So the olive was the fifth item that moved them up in their levels. So they figured, hey, get rid of the olives, boom, $500,000. That's pretty, pretty cool, right? Now the question is, well, what if you like olives? Okay. Or more importantly, sometimes corporations can look at things from the point of how much can we remove? How much can we eliminate? What can we take out of this and people not be upset with me? Okay? And many times, you're going to see that less and less, and it's like Jenga, like the game Jenga. It becomes less stable. They're taking something from the base and putting it on top, and it becomes less stable over time. This is a calculation that you already make in your everyday life. Okay? It's not something new or, or different. It's just something you're already factoring in. I'm just giving it like a little bit of a name or categorization. Now, if you do have goodwill, what can you turn it into? Well, you can turn it into loyalty for your company, you know, attention. When you send them an email, when you send them something, do they listen to you? Now, and when they listen to you, do they actually believe you when you say something to them? Do they come back and do they tell other people to come back? This is something in the personal world, the business world, all over the place. You're already using it and your decisions are based on this factor. You know, in the relationship world, husband and wife, you might call this brownie points. It's this very tricky system I haven't quite figured out yet, but apparently you do good things for your spouse and then you get brownie points and then you mess up once and then you lose them all. <laughs> That's kind of how brownie points work, as best I can tell. Okay? And here's a guy and hopefully he's building up some brownie points or some goodwill and maybe he's building them up for a rainy day or... Maybe he wants to go golfing next week and he, he wants to introduce that to his wife. Or maybe he's in the doghouse and he's building goodwill. Okay. But in closing, I just want you to remember that you know, profits are great and making money is great, but goodwill and profits are even better. Remember to measure the goodwill because everyone around you is already doing it. Thank you very much.